I gave this some thought. Micah the most selfish? Nah, I ain't going. Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys fan talk, right back, like I never left. What's up with y'all, man? Happy Friday. Look, I'm going to just get right to it, but before I do, before I do, I appreciate all the support, y'all, man. Thank y'all for hitting that like and subscribe button, showing me love every day, tapping into the content. Although Cowboys Nation has something new going on every day, every day is something new. It's all good, though. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right, man. I'm, I'm tired of being negative. I'm trying myself, trying to pull myself out of this negative spiral that Cowboys Nation is into. I swear we're going to get back to some positivity. We're going to focus on things that can help this team, or at least I'm going to try, whether it's going to help or not. That's for the universe. And <laughs> but I promise y'all, man, I'm trying to turn things around. But right now, I got to talk about the topic of the day. I can't have a voice in Cowboys Nation. And ignore the serious topics. I can't just get excited when it's like, hey, we might sign King Henry. And then when, you know, the topic is put on the table, is Micah Parsons the most selfish player on the Dallas Cowboys? I can't ignore it. Now, if you're wondering where this came from, shout out to my brother-in-law Nation. Um, salute one of the goats in this game. Shout out to Jesse Holly. Um, definitely informative. Former Cowboys player. Now he covers the Cowboys. I think he works at the Star as well. Um, and the other brothers and, and, and ladies that were on that podcast clip. You can find it at Law Nation Sports. I just want to make sure I get proper credit. Um, if you want to go see the clip that, that is floating around, you can also find it on my Twitter or on Twitter, um, Cowboys underscore Fan Talk. Um, I retweeted it on my page. It's on Law's page, et cetera. Now we get the pleasantries out of the way, letting y'all know where y'all can find the full clip. If you want to go listen, Jesse Holly, I feel like this. I feel like this. I feel like the commentary, hopefully, was from a good place. I don't think Jesse Holly has anything personal against Micah Parsons. It doesn't strike me as a person like that. I hope there's no hidden agendas. I hope this isn't like, you know, something coming from someone else, you know, going to plant that out there. I don't think that's the case. I think the harshness of the word selfish is going to make the whole message get lost. If you listen to the whole interview, Jesse bigs up Micah. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's the fastest, the strongest, one of the best defenders or players, athletes in the NFL. You know, but the selfishness part comes in when he, he says there's like a lack of focus. Now, the crazy thing is if you pay attention to Micah Parsons like I do, I'm talking about across socials, on Twitter, YouTube, everywhere, you'll notice that Micah Parsons in the offseason is getting it in. I'm talking about training. He's going hard. Shout out to my brother, Jay Tuck. Tuck did a phenomenal breakdown on this exact topic, and he's the reason I made a video on it. Um, go check his video out, please. Um, CFO Sports. Y'all know who Jay Tuck is, and if you don't, you need to get familiar with him. Um, and he did a play-by-play -play of the interview, and I appreciated it because he talked on each topic, and he kind of paused it and broke it down and gave his full-fledged, thought-out process. I'm not going to do that, you know, um, because, like I said, you can go find it and digest it yourself. But Tuck was making some good points, you know, and one of the points he made was, you know, you can see Micah everywhere. Micah is everywhere, training-wise, with Andrew Whitworth. He, he, he learned boxing and, you know, I think kickboxing and and I think he did some judo. And, like, I think he, <laughs> he was with Charles Haley, DeMarcus Ware, um, at the Pass Rush Summit with Vaughn Miller. And I'm talking about he went from being an attendee at the Pass Rush Summit, Pass Rush Summit to – being one of the people that speak and with teaching some of the young pass rushers, even from last summer, I'm talking about constantly working. But you can go to work and work hard and still not, still not be effective in what you're doing. Now, I'm not saying that's what Mike is doing. I'm saying that I think what Jesse's saying is, you know, there's parts of his game that still need to be unlocked. That's what I'm going to take it as because I'm not here to attack Micah Parsons and I ain't here to attack Jesse Holly. You know, I don't know Jesse Holly personally at all. We, we had a, I think we've exchanged on Twitter maybe once or twice, but nothing too extensive. I'm just here to talk about what I think he meant. Pay attention to that. What I think he meant. I can't speak for the brother. I can't call Jesse Holly. I can't text him. So this is my interpretation. And him just saying that, you know, Fred Warner, let's use him as an example. You know, Fred Warner, Roquan Smith, players like that are locked in, more locked in than Micah. 
do I feel like that could be the case? Some possible, possible. But I always say, I also say this: Mike is a little bit younger than both of those gentlemen. Um, he hasn't even gotten to a second contract yet. Both of those gentlemen have have and gotten paid. So there's a level of maturation that he deserves to be able to be afforded. You know, I always hear stuff like Jalen Hurts got to get a chance to develop, and this player got to get a chance to develop. But Dallas Cowboys players, not just Micah Parsons, never get that chance. CeeDee Lamb's supposed to be a finished product. Mike, or Dak Prescott was never given that development label ever. And Mike is not neither. You know, T.J. Watt been in this league for almost a decade, you know, and stuff like that. Like, so there's 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 tricks of the trade and, and – and nuance and stuff like that that you build, leadership skills that you build over time that you 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 gain through experience. And I think Micah hasn't gotten a chance to do that. But I also don't think that it's fair to call him selfish because he's just young. Micah's just young, man. It's cool. He's one of the most immensely talented young players in the league. He's always been an all-pro, whether first team or second team this year, always been a pro bowler. He ain't even had a chance to have negative offseason. Every offseason, it's been like, you know, Dak Prescott, raise your level to play. This person, raise your level to play. Get rid of that coach. Get rid of this. But, oh, Micah, Micah, Micah can do no wrong. This is the first time. We need to get a chance. This is the first time that Micah's had some adversity in the NFL outside of winning and losing where he got his own fan base questioning him. I think at bare minimum, we need to allow this man a chance to respond. Let's see how he responds to his adversity. Because, yeah, there's a segment of Cowboys fans, they probably stupid with no disrespect, that think, ah, let's trade Micah. Let's, let's trade Micah. Go get picks, man. He not focused. He not locked in. Or, you know, they'll take what Jesse's saying and try to use it as a bullet or as a, 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 a detriment. And I think Jesse's just saying, hey, man, if you unlock the part of your game where you're studying film like Fred Warner, like Roquan Smith, you know, shout out to my boy Akoy Media. <clears throat> Okoye Media, sorry. I'm talking too fast. Another one of the Giants goats in this game. Um, he been saying, yo, move Mike in the linebacker for the longest because he thinks that Mike can get 12 to 13 sacks, maybe 10, 11 sacks, and 100 plus tackles if he applied himself. You know, that's Micah's superpower, if y'all forget. Micah, the move around factor is Micah's superpower. Fred Warner can't play edge. <laughs> if he tried, he, no. He's n- no. Micah can play linebacker. Micah could probably play corner or safety. He probably just can't play like one tech because he's just not heavy enough. But he'd probably give anybody fits in the middle if he tried. My point is his asset is his versatility and his ability to do those versatile things at a high level. Not just versatility, but at a high level. So never take that fully away. I think that would be crazy. I think if we get another defensive coordinator or we keep Dan Quinn, please let Micah play edge and linebacker. It's situational. He's that good. He should be able to do both. That's what's going to separate him from just T.J. Watt, who's chest and edge, right? Bosa, who's chest and edge. Micah Parsons is more edge with an asterisk and an arrow pointing up because that's, you know, that's where Micah's headed. Um, but asking him to study and be Roquan Smith or, or be Fred Warner, I get the premise. But let's not forget, Micah is not more than a linebacker. He will always be more than a linebacker. And if you ever just cut off the linebacker portion, you'll be ruining the, the asset you have. If you ever just force him to be an edge, you'll be ruining the asset you have. You need to be able to keep the defenses guessing and use it properly. As we've learned, we're the first play, first NFL team to have something like a Micah Parsons. We've learned that that versatility is, is, is also hard to plan with, not just plan for. How am I going to use him in different ways that won't hurt the defense but will help Micah? Those things. But let's let's see what we come up with. Like I said, this is the offseason of, of, of reflection and going back to the drawing board because of how bad we flamed out. But this whole selfishness of Micah Parsons, I don't agree with it. I don't. I thought I did for a minute, but I started to think about it like it's, it's disrespectful. I don't think Micah's selfish. I think Micah's young. He should be allowed to mature and grow into his role of leader. He's a leader by default of just his his pure greatness. But let him grow into his leadership. Even Dak Prescott, who's an amazing leader to me. I know y'all hate the results we've gotten in the playoffs. Even Dak Prescott was allowed to mature into a leader. He wasn't the de facto leader of this team when he got here. He was the quarterback. Michael Parsons isn't the de facto leader right now. 
He's our edge slash linebacker. That's all world. So my statement, just to let y'all know, just to be clear, I'm riding with Micah Parsons. So there's no confusion. I'm riding with Micah. Let that boy develop. I think the comments of saying selfishness is too harsh, and it's going to get misconstrued. Let's refocus as a Cowboys nation. Let's, let's, let's start to get back to seeing what we can do to get better. We ain't going to have nobody believing in us this year, so get that out your head. Those days is over. Ain't going to be no beating our chest or nothing. It's just put your head down, let's get to work, if we can. Because remember, star is bright. Can't turn off that light. I'll holler.